Here's a quick video, I hope it'll be quick, to show how one can repair a particular microphone made by Shure. This is an older microphone, it's been discontinued. It's the model PG81. It's a condenser cardioid instrument microphone uh, intended for either sound reinforcement or recording. It's fairly inexpensive. I think the list price on these was not much over $100, but a pretty solidly built uh, you know, metal case. Uh, I've been using these for many years uh, as sound reinforcement for a community band that I'm dealing with. Um, we nominally just have a PA system a Fender PD-250, I believe it is, uh, which has microphone inputs, but they don't provide phantom power. And uh, we have one dynamic mic, uh, which is used for Vox, for announcements. That's the primary purpose of the PA system. But because the woodwind section is kind of weak volume-wise compared to the brasses and so on, it's uh, desirable to amplify them just a little bit. So I hang a pair of these things on stands kind of pointing from above at each section, the clarinets and the flutes, uh, and the volume on those uh, channels to the power amplifier is turned up just enough that it enhances the uh, volume that the audience hears from those sections. So that's what I use these for. Uh, because these are not phantom powered, or at least I think these may be phantom powerable, <laughs> but uh, the uh, way I have to use them with the, the Fender amplifier is either to use an outboard power supply, which I wasn't even sure would work with these, and I've lost the manual. But years ago, I just said I'll buy these mics because they can at least be powered from a battery. So the uh, battery compartment is exposed by unscrewing the body and pulling it down till it won't go out anymore. And there's a compartment for a 1.5 volt double A, you know, alkaline cell. The problem is the positive side of the battery just goes up against that simple nub. The minus side has this. Well, it's supposed to be a spring clip, but it isn't actually springy. It's just a very thin piece of sheet metal that comes up from whatever compartment is below there and then bends over um, to make contact with the negative side of the battery. And the problem is that the battery is shorter than the distance between the nub and the top of that plate, so it, that flat part actually has to be angled up a little bit so it makes contact with the battery. Uh, I always thought this was a design flaw in this. The connector ought to be a lot more robust than it is, and since it has to be bent up practically every time the microphone gets used, because I don't store the batteries in these, I'm concerned about battery leakage, I have a little piece of bent uh, paper clip wire that I can grab under there and just lift it up ever so slightly so that it once again makes contact with the battery. And, but that pushes it back down, and the next time you put the battery in, it's loose again. So how many hundreds of times have I pulled up on that little tab? I tried sticking something under them, but that didn't really work out. You know, a little piece of foam or something, it didn't really work out. Anyway, so I have two of these mics, and both of them have had the, uh, the negative battery connector snap off right where it bends. Uh, so... This video is about how I repair these. Now these are temporary fixes. I'm planning on replacing these microphones. And uh, Sure has a program where if you have a microphone which needs repair but they no longer repair, they will uh, send you a comparable new microphone essentially for the price, the flat fee that they would charge to repair the microphone. So I'm planning on replacing these with a newer model and those will be phantom powered and I will use an outboard phantom power supply for them just get rid of the whole battery issue once and for all but for other people who have uh, PG81's or similar Shure microphones 
this may be useful how I uh, did this. I've already done the repair, so I'm just going to show how I went about doing it without actually showing me doing it, if that makes any sense. So the uh, steps to get at this so you can actually solder it, you have to have more of the, the metal on the clip ex exposed than it is like this. So you have to get this part out of the way at the very least. And to do that you have to partially dismantle the microphone. So the first thing you do is you pull the uh, body down as far as it will go and a Phillips screwdriver. There's a screw on the top side right next to the the on off switch and that gets removed and once that's removed the head can be slid off carefully you don't want to damage the uh, microphone element that's in there so gently pull it off straight out and that exposes the uh, the microphone element itself and then there's some foam padding and then there's the circuit board and the switch and there's a sort of a zinc chassis that's all mounted on and then the battery compartment so there's another view of that so once that's been uh, the head has been removed you roll it over on its back so you see the back side of the circuit board and there's this one screw right there that holds the circuit board in place and that needs to get removed Once that's been removed, it's now possible to slide the body off over the top of the microphone to expose what's down here. Uh, but there's this switch that's sticking up and you wouldn't be able to slide this part of it up over that with the switch in the way. That's why this screw here has been removed. It basically just push the circuit board down by pushing on the switch and the circuit board kind of comes down at an angle there so the top of the switch is below the surrounding items. With that done, and again being careful not to grab up here, the body or the uh, this part, whatever we're calling it, can be slid up over and off. Once that's done, you basically have the little piece of copper, it's a spring contact that will fall off when you take this part off so make sure you don't lose that uh, and then there's the isolation transformer here for the balance line the XLR connector itself and then the battery compartment uh, rolling it around like this now we can see this entire metal part here coming up from under here I believe it's riveted to this zinc casting here and then it makes its bend it's actually two bends it makes a bend at about a 45 degree angle than another bend uh, to go to the actual contact. You can see the blob of solder there. That's where I've soldered this back together again. Uh, basically I just applied some solder to the broken off bit along the edge. It solders very easily. I think it's just you know tin plated copper I think and then I s sweat a little bit of uh, uh, solder onto the metal tab down here that comes out of the body and then uh, I used a uh, needle nose pliers to hold the two pieces together and just touched it with a soldering iron so that the two parts would sweat together now you know a solder joint is not a great way to fix this it does make a good electrical connection and so far I've used these mics a couple of times with just that in place and it didn't seem to stress it that much to break it. The solder after all is a little bit soft and it'll flex. Uh, I still have to gently pull these back up each time I use them but again I'm just trying to limp to the end of the concert season. Uh, I suppose if you were able to stick on a piece of stiff foam or something behind the terminal it would help prevent the metal fatigue at the solder joint and you might get a lot of use out of these but that's essentially what I did is by disassembling the microphone to this point I was able to get at it and make a decent solder blob repair there. 
All right, reassembly. The first thing we have to do is slide this part down over the top again. And once you get down to the point where you're getting to the XLR connector, you want to make sure that this part of it right here, where these two um, raised sections, you put this uh, spring contact nestled in there with its dimple or the bump pointing up. The idea is that dimple will scrape on the inside of this part to make a connection from the, uh, the chassis to the outer metal sleeve. So you make sure that's still in there when you slide this down. Once you get it that far it'll stay in place. You pull it all the way down and now we can push the circuit board back up and put in its securing screw. So now the circuit board's back in its proper position and the head can be slid on. Again, carefully, don't want to damage the uh, microphone element. Make sure that the slot lines up with the switch. Put it on there until the, the holes line up here. There, it's reassembled, and now this can be slid shut and screwed closed. I hope that that's useful.